All right, hello guys. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about our winter thoughts part seven. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about actually how snowpack in Canada and Siberia affects our air temperatures throughout this fall and winter season and the importance of it and why we're gonna be continuing to watch it throughout the fall and winter months. But before we get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias, especially the Instagram, which I, me I know I mentioned this every video, but we've been working really hard on that. So I'm gonna leave that in the pinned comment. And if you guys go ahead and follow that, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Now we're looking at a little graphic here and this is just gonna give you an idea of how the snowpack affects the temperatures first off. So I want you to first off, take a look at your bottom left corner. You can see that the, the upper yellow arrows that is your sunlight that's being reflected. And then your downward red arrows are is, is sunlight that's being absorbed. So obviously the sunlight that's being absorbed leads to temperatures being higher near the surface. Whereas if most of it gets reflected, that's gonna lead to a lot less of that sunlight getting absorbed obviously. And then we'll have less influence from the sun on our surface temperature. So you can see there in the very top right uh, you can see that it says ground right there, and then it has a little bit of a, a big red arrow going down, and then a little arrow going up. So we can see that when there is no snow at all, we see that there is a lot of sunlight being absorbed about, uh, I would say, it, it says 85% on average, and then 15% gets uh, deflected. But you can see that when we have contaminated snow, so really old snow with a lot of big grains, and it's not really very consistent layer of powdery snow, we do see 30%. So already just in really bad snow, we see double the reflection going on as far as that incoming sunlight is concerned. Now I'm gonna go ahead and save you guys some time and I'm gonna show you guys the fresh snow that's clean. And this is gonna, you know, save you guys time from everything that's in between there. You can go ahead and take a look if you'd like. But on fresh snow that's clean, so really, really fresh snow, you know, just has fallen in the past three or four days. Still very consistent, very, very fluffy snow. This is gonna lead to 90% reflection and only 10% of that sunlight being absorbed. So obviously the air temperature right near the surface in these areas is gonna be very, have very low influence from the sunlight during the time that it has fresh snow. So this is why it's so important snowpack and how it affects the winter and fall months so so much and you can see the importance from old snow versus fresh snow as well so that's why it's not only important that we have snow on the ground but also that we continue to see snow on the ground in canada now i'm going to talk about why it's important for areas that you don't live in to get snow uh, now at this point in the video. So right now we're looking at our GFS total snowfall through the next 384 hours. So basically the entire model run. And this isn't gonna look exactly like this. this is a very, very far out model run obviously to be showing snowfall. But I just wanted to show the fact that we do have a lot of snowfall sh showing up for all a, a lot of Russia there. And then also a lot of Canada and Northwestern United States. Now, the most important one is Canada, but the second most important one is there in Siberia and there in Greenland, because this is where we see a lot of our cold air come from. It comes from those Arctic regions, and sometimes it even comes from the whole other side of the world and crosses over the Arctic regions and then ends up where we're at. Um, because sometimes we see troughs that are right there vertical with each other. And when we see that, the air kind of circulates throughout them. And we'll see the air from Russia a lot of times end up in Canada and the United States as well. So that air being colder than normal due to snowpack is important for us sometimes as well. But especially Canada, because when we do have a trough in the United States, a lot of times, almost always, that air is coming directly from Canada. So the more snow that's there, the colder and more potent that cold air is going to be more times than not. So now we're looking at our monthly snow. I'm gonna be using 2009 to 2010 as an example. So you can see how much snowfall we end up seeing and how much snow on the ground we end up seeing on some, during some years this time. We're gonna be looking at 2009 from 2000 to 2010. Uh, and down there on the bottom, you can see that that's actually the percentage of days that we end up seeing snowfall on the ground for certain areas. So if it's white, it's zero to 10% of the days during the month of August. Orange is 10 to 25, yellow is 25 to 40, light green is 40 to 55, dark green is 55 to 70, light blue is 70 to 85, and then dark blue is almost 100%, 85 to 100%. So you can see Greenland, even in August, you're seeing 85 to 100% of the time during August, you're seeing snowfall on the ground for all those blue areas. Moving on to September, you see some yellows and oranges show up. 
uh, for Russia and Canada. And this is by the end of September. So this is the entire month of September in 2009. This is what we ended up seeing that year. I'm using this as an example because this was a, qu was a quite snowy winter and a quite cold winter for the eastern United States. And I think overall for most of the United States, a lot of people saw a really cold and snowy winter. Now moving on to October, you can see that we do have some of those blues finally making their way into Russia and Canada and Alaska as well. And a lot of those yellows and oranges starting to show up for Southern Canada and then into the United States in the year of 2009 during October. So that means that probably by the end of October, we were seeing some of those days finally get some snowfall uh, and some snow on the ground for a lot of those yellows and orange regions, which again is under for under 50% of the days had snow on the ground, which again, most likely was towards the end of the month. Looking at November, obviously you can see things really fill out with these dark blues, which is where we're at 85 to 100% of the days during November had snow on the ground for Alaska, Greenland, Northern Canada, and almost all of that Eastern Russia, that Eastern like um, seven eighths of Russia definitely had almost all of the month of November have snow. And again, that helps that cold air to become even more potent as it crosses over areas with that snow on the ground. So that becomes all the more important as we see, as we move towards November and December that we have snowfall on the ground for all of these regions. That really helps us get even bigger and bigger cool downs as we head into the winter months. And you can see by December, I think this is the last month I'm gonna show during this year, we saw obviously the dark blues head well into the United States, interior New England, uh, most of the central northern regions of the United States and all of Canada is pretty much covered in the dark blue. So we saw snow on the ground for all of these regions, as well as Greenland and pretty much all of Russia. All of the Ru all of Russia is in that light blue and almost all of it's in that dark blue. So again, all of these regions had hardly any of, you know, solar rays had hardly any influence on the ground temperatures as almost all of it was getting reflected back uh, back up so we were hardly seeing any of that get absorbed into the ground with all of this new snowfall on the ground so that's why this is going to be all the more important as we head into the winter months this year as we're going to be seeing are we going to have more snow than average in these areas or less snow than average that's really going to affect how potent the cold air will be when it comes it won't affect if the cold air is going to arrive it's just going to affect how potent it is going to be once it does now, looking at August of this year, you can see there is some oranges there for Western Canada, and we just have our normal areas there in Can in Greenland that have very dark blues. So besides that, uh, not a lot is happening yet. It's going to take till the end of September, which is coming up. So once we're into October, we'll be able to look at what the September total is for these regions. So we'll be able to update you guys on this, but for now, uh, we hardly have any data to see what we're looking at right now, besides the snowfall that we know is coming. So again talking about that snowfall that's coming here is the gfs total snowfall for canada united states uh greenland and most of the north pole there you can see we do have a lot of snowfall on the way for a lot of northern canada so we are going to have a decent snowpack and i would say even i would say we're probably going to be a little bit above average as far as snowpack is concerned in canada the cold air has really been forced to stay up there in canada which is actually good news so a lot of you complaining that it's warm in september uh, that's going to help it be even colder in the wintertime if, you know, everything pans out the right way because we are building more and more of a snowpack in Canada the more and more the cold air stays up there. So uh, it's actually good news for winter snow lovers that we're seeing that cold air stay up there and all the snowfall. So here's why it's so important. We're looking at our jet stream right now in the green and yellow areas. That's where our jet stream is located. So obviously when we see that dip up and you can see those little arrows pointing in the direction of the wind. So this is looking towards the 9th of October. This isn't a long time, but I just wanted to show an example of what it would look like if there was a trough in the eastern United States and how this would affect these areas. So remember the areas that had snowfall, northern Canada into some of the areas in southern Canada. As that air is coming from the north, you can see those air arrows all over North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, all those arrows are pointing down, meaning that the wind is coming from Canada into the United States. That's going to lead to very potent cold air being able to make its way into the United States, more potent than if there was no snow on the ground in Canada. And then our last frame here, this is the same exact hour as that. Here's the temperature anomalies. You can see a lot of those dark blues and purples. That's that very potent below average air making its way directly in the areas that are having their wind come from Canada, 
the areas that are going over the snowpack and then moving their way into the United States are seeing the most below average temperatures. So this just goes to prove the fact that snowpack does have a very big impact on our temperatures, especially fresh snowpack, which is what we're going to be dealing with uh, in the earlier portion of October, obviously. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something from this video. I had a lot of people, or I think at least two people ask me to make a video on snowpack and how it's going to affect the fall and winter months. So I wanted to go ahead and do that. I wanted to wait till we were heading a little bit more into the time of year where we're actually dealing with snowfall. So I think now that we've finally started to see some snowfall in the United States and Canada, it was about time to make this video. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. See you guys in the next video.